Hey, welcome ladies and gentlemen to another edition of the Blue Ridge Silverhound High Rollers Edition market video where we take a look at the top 10 highest selling coins on eBay for the previous month. Now, we are already almost 10 days into the new month. I haven't done one of these and we're going to throw one out there for your Sunday morning, afternoon. Man, I'm really slow on the uptake today, but we're just going to go ahead and throw this video out there for you guys to gloss over. Um, now, the uh, the reaction has been somewhat mixed on this video. I've only been doing it since about, what, December? Somewhere around there. Um, some people just think, oh man, these are some pricey coins, and b bada bing, that's it. You know, so let's see if we can inject a little bit of, uh, I guess, entertainment in these videos from this point forward so that way it's a worthwhile endeavor for you guys to check it out but this is for the month of april and there is no fooling around here we got 10 absolutely beautiful coins or lots to talk about um many many tens of thousands of dollars in today's market um well wow, where's all this money coming from i mean you know you have your high-end collectors that are obviously into these things but as you guys know, the crypto market and just the overall stock market in general, I mean, if you're into that sort of thing, I think I think the crypto market and all of the money that's coming from uh, a lot of huge wins, uh, you know, as a result of a certain <coughs> Doge coin, uh, probably has contributed to a few of these sales. And rightfully so, you know, um, the crypto market is incredibly speculative. It's very risky. You don't you don't know whether these things are going to go up or down. So what people are doing is they're cashing out, and instead of holding the money, they're going and buying actual physical assets for crying out loud. And I'm pretty sure maybe one or two of these on the list is somehow contributing to that, along with a myriad of bidding from these investors uh, that are getting into. Um, investor quality grade coins but you know blue ridge high rollers just doesn't sound you know incredible enough how, how about we call it the las vegas edition yeah, that's right uh where every single coin is like betting ten thousand dollars on the hand of blackjack will you hit 21 or will you go over and lose out uh not with these for sure i I know that's probably a bad analogy um, for the Vegas high rollers, but yeah. How about we go ahead and get started with uh, the number 10 coin on the list? Uh, maybe, I don't know. Number 10 coin. And uh, by the way, these coins are either graded or wrong. It really doesn't make any difference. Uh, there are a few actual um, uh, coin lots that have sold for a lot more money that I did not put on here because they are relists. Uh, so something happened in there. Someone changed your mind, you know, someone... Uh, I don't know, lost all their money or had all their money stolen out of the safe. I'm like, why does that really matter when you're paying electronically? But anyways, enough about that. How about we uh, start off with some early old gold? And uh, this one is a uh, true rarity. It's an 1877 $10 Eagle. Uh, this one grades out NGC 53. Uh, it's uh, also the um, Variety 2, which will have the... The little scroll on the reverse uh, above the heraldic eagle. Uh, I mean, this thing, this thing has seen some action, and you know, I wouldn't put it past uh, its previous life as being a coin that was probably spent by either Lewis and Clark for some ladies of the night. It's really hard to say, you know. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess in any capacity, this coin would have found its way into a general store in a bank. And then a lady of the night, and then back to a general store, um, probably all in the same day. So you just never know. Uh, but ten dollars, if you could think about it, back, 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 about 150 years ago, could buy a lot. You know, it could buy the Aston Martin of beautiful thoroughbred horses. Man, you know, just imagine a 600 horsepower, um, just incredible horse uh just skirting around across the plains it'll, it'll make sure it gets you to where you need to go but this coin true rarity only 50 to 65 of them uh are known to exist that's actually a pretty wide range of coins 50 to 65 uh, it's 15 15 coin uh you know spread right there uh but this one ladies and gentlemen uh a best offer was accepted and it was sold by bellevue rare coins 
in Washington State. Uh, so a best offer was accepted. Their original asking price was $16,500. But as important and as much of a key this is to early gold, uh, this was a really, really solid buy. And one in, one in which I would say just based off of the amount of them known to this day, um, is an incredibly investable piece that will only continue to go up in value. Um, so well done to both the seller and the buyer. Just a really nice, acceptable market piece. Uh, but yeah, anyways, on to the next number nine coin on the list. And it is an 1853. It's a little itty bitty tiny miniature gold piece here. They call these fractionals. This is actually one of the more rare it, types. Uh, it goes by BG503, only because a lot of them look so similar. And um, these fractionals uh, were made during the California gold rush days, uh, usually by independent assayers, you know, trying to convert their gold into little itty bitty coins that could be used for, you know, regular commerce system. Now, you could probably only afford one lady of the night with this, and you might be able to only afford them before midnight. So with this little piece, uh, because if you can think about it back in the day, this is probably more in line, you, you know, um, in today's dollars, uh, probably, you know, a nickel's worth of goods um, back in 1853. But this is a really cool piece. And uh, it also helps that it's an earlier PCGS holder, uh, one of the uh, earlier generations, OGH is what they call it. And uh, other things to know with PCGS AU58, so um, the grade is clean and details free, uh, which means that it's unplayed with. But this one, through 36 bids, sold for $17,650. Man, that's a lot of uh, McDonald's cheeseburgers for sure. But uh, this was also sold by Great Scott Scoot. Scott. 7782 uh they are located in socal uh pretty nice coin if you're into this sort of thing uh and usually i'm not into the whole fractional bit um only because it's it's a very niche i mean you can literally spend a lifetime collecting just fractionals because there's so many of them um so many independent assayers were producing these and uh yeah it, it could get pretty 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 involving and uh you know uh, yes, yeah, some of them are worth the, the kind of money that you see here. All right, under time for the number eight coin. I, I My mind is just not there today. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but we have an incredible proof. Liberty had nickel. Uh, this example right here is in 1903. Uh, as you can see, PCGS Proof 68 Cameo. When coins become kind of like this ghostly image of what a normal business strike coin would look like these things are incre incredibly desirable this thing is incredibly clean ladies and gentlemen there's nary a scratch or a hairline on this coin and um, i would say that if you were into this sort of thing this is probably a mark marquee piece for your collection um Probably the only thing holding it back is that's not a proof 70, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, we, when we're talking about coins of this caliber, these are extremely the investment type grade. Um, it, collectors will like it too. Uh, but at me personally as a collector, and I do buy some pretty expensive coins, I would probably be okay with like a proof 66, you know, that's not a cameo uh, in which a coin like that would be well under a thousand bucks. Um, but this one, yeah, uh, the proof cameo, anything from the early 1900s, let alone the 1800s are rather difficult to find. Now this one right here is sold for $18,500 by Rob's coins in Collegeville, Pennsylvania. Um, simply beautiful coin. Uh, glad to see something like this on the list. Uh, you know, a, a coin or a series rather that. Aside from the 1913, you know, rarity uh, of the series, uh, we just don't see too many Liberty Head Nickels on, on lists like this. Um, so, great, wonderful coin. 
Simply stunning. I love it. All right, how about the number seven coin? And we have a number of coins for this one. We have um, actually a full set of Morgan dollars, save for one specific date. And we'll get to that in a second. Um, this is an assemblage of Morgan dollars uh, from 1878 all the way up to 1921, housed in a uh, Dance Co. album. All right, and that's that's what you see here. So what I did was there was a number of photos, and I just made it up two at a time on here. Um, great, great job, by the way, by the, for the seller to um, get good pictures. There's also reverse images of every page. I did not put those in here. Uh, but as you can see, there's a few, uh, you know, incredibly tougher dated, you know, CCs, 78, 79, and 80. Um, 81 CC, that's strange because that's a very common date uh, coin in high grades. So to see a nice low ball example in there is different. Same with the 82 CC and the 83. Those are, uh, oh, and 84 CC is a little bit easier to find as well. So these three right here, a little bit easier to find, but the, the older ones like the 80s, 79, and 8, 78 are, um, uh, above all else, some of the more tougher dates in mint state condition. Uh, here's the next page right here. Uh, we got the 85 CC, a little bit tougher, 84. Uh, let's see. And then you get, begin to get into some tougher dates as you go along. This 89 CC is a lot tougher than you think. Uh, in mid state condition, like a low end one, I mean, that's easily a $1,500 coin. Uh, there's a 90 right there. Um, the next more easier accessible one is this 91 CC. And then you get here into the meat and bones of the series, the 1890s. And this is where it gets really difficult. Um, the 1895 is a proof only issue. So that's why there is none here. Uh, but there is an 1893 S. A highly counterfeited coin, as a seller uh, had um, posted in the description, and I agree with that. Um, this one is uh, an AG3 through NGC, so not bad. I'm glad they actually have a graded example of this coin in here. Uh, it just made the whole collection just easier to sell. But as you can see, we have some pretty, uh, pretty nice circulated pieces. There's not a lot that I would say would would particularly draw me in as being like cleaned. Uh, this 92 S is awfully dark and seems a little unnatural. And that might just be a really dark um, terminal toning on that one, or it could have been cleaned at some one point and then retoned. Uh, but aside from that, all the coins look fantastic in this particular lot. I would be personally happy to own this collection um, and then just go and upgrade from there. But uh, there you go. Yeah, very nice. And uh, this one, a best offer was accepted. The original asking price was $18,999.99. Sold by uh, Double C Coins and Collectibles in Virginia. Um, pretty cool. So for those of you that collect coins and you, you want to assemble something that's going to build wealth and value, um, a Morgan Dollar series is a great one because it's one of the more accessible i would say and uh one of the most popular when you go to liquidate this collection and let's say you've spent a number of years putting it together um as you can see it'll command uh full market value uh, as this one did uh pretty nice set right here all right we're almost halfway through at number six uh and we have probably one of the most stunning golds i've seen this is an 1887 one dollar uh, gold, uh, they call this the Indian princess. This is the type three type of this obverse. And, um, there's really not a whole lot else to say. This coin is magnificent. And, um, yes, it's a PCGS mint state 68. It's a top pop coin, non, none finer. This is, um, this is like the, the sexiest thing that you will ever see today. Probably. You know, it is Mother's Day, so for all you guys out there with wives, this might be the second most sexiest thing that you see today. Uh, this one sold through 74 bids at $20,427. And um, how appropriate, sold by the best treasures for you. And this is certainly a wonderful treasure. Um, I, I mean, it's incredible. And now, 
It's interesting. PCGS price guides forty thousand dollars for this coin in this grade. So you could just see the market adjustment right there um, at work, and uh, the number five coin. So we're officially on the back five here. It's going to be this thing. Another uh, another interesting um, early assay piece. Uh, this is an eighteen fifty two fifty dollar face uh, Humbert Gold. All right. So this was. This was one of those, uh, I guess, companies or assayers that helped, um, I guess, prop up gold and future minting of coins in San Francisco. I've talked about this before, but this this is an instrumental piece, uh, an instrumental assayer during a period of time when San Francisco Mints stopped producing coins for a number of years before they got back into it. And uh, this one right here, ladies and gentlemen, it grades out PCGS VF20 in an original green holder. So it's an older, like 20 plus year old holder. Uh, they call it a territorial slug, which is a much bigger version of that coin that we saw earlier on the list. This is like the big, huge, big daddy brother uh, thing right here. Uh, but pretty cool coin. Uh, if you were into like early gold like this, then this this would be a, a niche piece for a collection of early gold, uh, any sort of territorial stuff. And again, sold by the best treasures for you. It seems like they have a really good thing going through 53 bids, sold for $24,500. Exceptional piece. And thank you, Mr. or Mrs. Best Treasures for offering this up. Number four on the list, and we have this, a stock photo of 90% silver. $1,000 face value. Physical silver continues to be just a, a force in the marketplace. Uh, it doesn't matter what you buy. Everything is commanding such a ridiculously huge premium that there is, I would firmly believe, a lot of FOMO in the marketplace uh, because physical silver is kind of light in certain areas. I, I know in my area in Northern California, um, it's really hard to find physical silver, you know, unless it's like a little bit here, a little bit there. But if you needed to buy big quantities, um, you have to resort to, you know, paying a little bit extra for it. Uh, what I find kind of interesting is they actually took the time to Photoshop the date off this Roosevelt nine. I mean, you know, God bless their heart. They, they don't want to promise you know, the, the the consumers that there's going to be nothing but 1964 Rosies in there because that would be that would be just a travesty, especially trying to find a thousand dollars face of one of the most common dates of 90 percent silver. Uh, but this one right here sold for twenty five thousand eight hundred nineteen dollars and thirty nine cents. And it appears like that this company, Aiden Coins in New Jersey, sold through two lots. So they sold through two 1,000 uh, face value bags of 90% silver. All right, well done. Uh, oh, by the way, it sold on April 4th. I didn't even mention that every single one of these sold in April, and you know, I actually have dates here of every one, but um, yeah, you guys can check it out. It, it's all on eBay for you. All right, we got a top three finish right here, and the number three coin is going to be this stunner. Now, I am a sucker of 18th century um, federal age of coins. This is one of them right here. I've never personally owned a $1 draped bust coin, uh, but I would like to say that one day that is, that's on my bucket list and it has to be graded really well. It has to be honest. And it has to have a lot of detail. All right. No clean coins or anything like that. So this one right here is a 1798, um, it's the small eagle reverse. It's got the 13 stars on there. So you got seven on one side, six on the other. Uh, there are a few variants that have like different amount of stars on one side to the other. Um, this one right here tabs in at PCGS AU53. Uh, simply beautiful coin. And, uh, you know, if you wanted to, you could sell this thing and buy yourself a brand new, slightly used Honda Accord. I know that doesn't make any sense. It's the same way as saying... Uh, congratulations on your brand new secondhand car, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, but uh, a best offer was accepted, probably around twenty-five thousand dollars, which is still a lot of money. Uh, that you know, instead of instead of buying a brand new car, you could buy one that has maybe twelve thousand miles on it. Um, and uh, there you go. 
Uh, this one was sold by J. Lewis 90 in uh, Ohio. Uh, if you think this one is nice, the next one is just a peach and a half. Uh, this one looks a whole lot more honest, I would say, than the previous coin, only because it's got like true, like 230 year old patina on there. Uh, but this is a $17.97 $1 draped bus as well. This also has that that smaller earlier eagle on the reverse. Uh, this one has the, what they call, 10 by 6 stars. So you got 10 stars here, 6 over here. Uh, rather unusual. Uh, this is also a Breen 3 variety. Um, and that's mostly due in part to the stars and uh, all that great stuff. Um, this one, exa this one example is a PCGS AU55. Um, it's also got that silly little green bean on there, the CAC sticker. Um, this was sold by one of my favorite dealers on eBay, uh, TNFC. They are in Winter Springs, Florida, and they are one of the big dealers that sells some pretty big coins. I, I mean, um, I mean, if you got the money and the balls to match. All right, I would buy from this dealer. All right, and if you didn't want to wait until the next big auction, I would buy from this dealer because uh, they they have all they have all the beef in the world, you know, uh, and even probably a giant, very lean rump roast to match. And sure enough, this straight bust right here has the marbling to really cook. All right, and then we have the number one coin. Uh, I mean, I used my subtlety in this one to show just how important a number one coin is to the list. And it's going to be this guy right here. Uh, yeah, another Morgan dollar. And, you know, it's it's funny because we talked about the set that had sold earlier in this video um, that had all the coins. But the one coin that actually had the slot in the album was actually a proof-only issue. And it's this one right here. In 1895... Proof, Morgan Dollar, a beautiful coin, uh, no doubt about it, very rare, uh, very exquisite, and very exclusive. Um, it, it's, like, it's like going to the champagne room, in, in which there is only one champagne room with its own bar, and yeah, and you're only invited. So, wow, the, this coin, uh, magnificent, I mean, this thing will look worlds different than a traditional business strike. Uh, Morgan Dollar, it doesn't matter what you set next to it. Uh, this thing will stick out uh, like like anything else. Um, but really, I, I mean, this is a very iconic early early U.S. type piece, if you could call it that. Uh, not very many people with a budget in mind to afford a coin like this would call it a tight piece. But there you go. A best offer was accepted under the original asking price of $52,500, by the way. Uh, you know, it's a PCGS Proof 61. It's only a 61. Imagine if this thing was a, uh, a 65. <laughs> what, what I do like is that it was sold by a company of, in where I live, all right? Pony Express coin ponied up just the most magnificent coin to grace this week's High Rollers um, list. By Blue Ridge Silverhound. And there you go. There's a recap of the top 10 coins to sell this week. Uh, just making the collective wallets sweat of every single investor out there. Um, I love talking about these videos. And I intend to talk about them even more. I think next time I'll have my jokes in line a little bit better. Because I, I felt a little silly and maybe just a little bit dumb. <laughs> throughout this video talking the way I did but anyways I wanted to make it just somewhat a little bit entertaining so that way you would watch through the whole thing but that's going to go ahead and do it ladies and gentlemen hopefully you guys enjoyed this video for your Sunday you guys uh, have a wonderful day don't forget to like share subscribe if you do all three of those then it would be a beautiful day in uh, the Blue Ridge Silverhound household and uh, I'm your host Sean Coinaholics, we are discovering together. As usual, have a great day, enjoy the hobby, and I'll see you on the next coin video.